Today, I want to explain how musical sound is built from the ground up so we can go from this to this. The first video I ever made on this channel was about making procedural music in Unity. This is currently my top video and there are a few comments that I want to address. First off, I dove really deep into performance optimizations to generate audio waveforms efficiently, specifically in the Unity engine. But I did not explain further how that system naturally expands into creating music. This was clear from the comments like these. Listen, I hear you guys. That's what this video is for. I will not go into many technical coding details here as this should be applicable to any procedural audio generation wherever you implement it, but I will dive deep into how sounds come together to become music. I would recommend wearing headphones for this, but if not, I will also do my best to make sure that the sounds I use can also be listenable on phone speakers as well. So let's start simple. In my first video, we had a simple sine wave. But the way we made it was not limited to a sine wave. Since it was built using a math function, it could be any kind of wave. It could have been a sawtooth wave. Or a square wave. These waves, however, while different sounding, are still not necessarily musical, right? The first step to making something more interesting would be modifying the sound over time. This is usually done either using another waveform or using some predefined shape to change how the wave interacts. So as an example, first let's take a sawtooth waveform. And then let's modify the volume based on a much lower frequency sine wave. Or maybe some other low frequency wave like another sawtooth wave. That sounds pretty cool, huh? These lower frequency waves in the audio production world are called low frequency oscillators, or LFOs. This is so useful because this gets as complex as you want. Since an LFO could be any kind of waveform, and you can change any property of the audio output you want, some more complex traits can emerge just from a simple oscillator. Let's modify some other sound properties with it. Let's take out our original sine wave and modify it with a sawtooth waveform. But this time, instead of modifying the volume, let's modify the pitch. Okay, sounds cool. But now let's bend this profile of the sawtooth a little bit so that it descends faster. Ooh, -wee, wowzers, that was a thumping bass line if I've ever heard one. This is actually how a lot of electronic bass lines and bass drums are created but it plays the same thing the whole time. So we need to connect it to some kind of source to control when and at what root frequency things are played. For me, I have a MIDI piano connected to my computer, but you can also just map different keys on your computer keyboard to control different things as well. Or even better, you could automate this process and have some kind of game mechanic or predefined sheet music control when notes are turned on and off. My personal setup for this video will turn on and off sounds when I press a key on the piano and the note will be based on what key I pressed. Okay, so let's use our trusty sawtooth again. I will trigger the sawtooth when I press a key on the keyboard like this. Because it's now triggered on each key press, I can press multiple at the same time. Now we're getting musical. To make it come in less harsh, I will use something called an envelope. This is a single automation that usually triggers when a note is either pressed or released. In this case, I will have it ramp up the volume in the beginning to make it less harsh, and fade out the volume after I release a key to make it trail out a little bit. Now, to make it even more lush, I have a little trick in my back pocket that I've been saving. When a note is pressed, instead of playing a single sawtooth, I will play multiple sawtooths at very slightly differing frequencies around the original wave. It's almost like a choir of sawtooth waves singing in unison. And when we play chords with this, ooh, it sounds amazing. Using these tricks, we can create so many other different sounds. We can create a square wave with a little unison and envelope automation to create a cool lead synth sound. We can use white noise and some volume automation to create some hi-hat drum sounds. We can use sine waves with envelopes to make a thumping kick drum. And we can combine the white noise with some sine automation to create snare drums as well. And these are just the simple ones. 
Imagine what is possible when you can start mixing and mashing all these techniques together. With just those simple techniques done, let's bring back that pumping bass line from earlier and have it play a few different notes. Let's now throw some snare drums and hi-hats on it to make it a little more interesting. Okay. With a thumping house groove line here, let's throw some luscious sawtooth chords on top. And finally, for the cherry on top, let's use that square synth lead to bring it all home. Well, that's it for now, but I hope I was able to shed some light on how these things come together to make music. And once you have a pipeline for generating waveforms, how far you can actually go with that. I really, really, really appreciate all the support, by the way. I'm at like 700 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane to me. It may not sound like a lot compared to other channels, but I can't even fathom that that many people are interested in what I have going on. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this so fun. My name is Ryan Hedgecock, and I'll see you next time.